Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you, DeAndre? Um, all right. So um, I see uh, I see like eleven people here, and let me quickly check um, how many people are in today's forum. And in today's forum, ten. So um, uh, two of them is mine. So ten. So still uh, one more person from the uh, collaborate uh, needs to sign into a discussion board today. Uh, don't forget to do that because you know you won't be counted present until you do that. All right. So um, uh, we are now. <laughs> okay, my voice is. We're now moving on to the uh, uh, Excel exercise of the uh, income statement, okay? Because yesterday we did uh, basically, you know, I had to condense everything uh, into a, uh, uh, like a couple of hours of lecture because of course we're running on a very tight schedule. So let's go to, uh, Let's go to um, the uh, why this is not this is not full screen. Why is it the scroll bars are not showing? Why? I have to move it by hand. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look at. Um, uh, this example, and if you open this file, if you open this file from uh, from our topics folder, it will definitely look um, uh, slightly different. I mean, I, I want it to be a uh, blank. I mean, all these highlighted cells, they need to be blank. Okay, so and. What does it look like? Is it a blank or uh, uh, it isn't? You will see it is a blank. Anyway, um, so we're going to be. Let's take a look at first. Let's take a look at this income statement. Do you have blank form or is it filled in? I'm talking about the uh, highlighted. It's blank. It's blank. It's blank. It's blank. Good. It's blank. Good. Yeah. If it is blank, you know that's what I wanted. Um, uh, excuse me, professor. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know what are you talking about. Which one is black? Do we need to also open the Excel at the same time? Of course, you have to open the Excel file. This, Do you see the Excel file? This is the Excel file, right? And from in the uh, course materials, right? We are here, topic two, right? So then, you know, what do you think I'm talking about? I'm talking about this. Right, you need to download this, and um, when you once you download it, it may not be uh, on this. There are multiple tabs at the bottom. It may not be here. If it isn't here, you select this. Okay, you'll need to select this bottom tab. Okay, I have very okay, limited. Professor, thank you. Okay, all right, you're welcome. I didn't know. All right. Me. Mm -hmm. Then let's go to the income statement. The income statement, um, and if they are all these highlight, these cells are blank, and that's what it should be. Now we need to uh, uh, first thing uh, we understand income statement uh, consists of uh, income and expenses mainly, right? Income and expenses. So. Uh, yes, here we are. Uh, here is income. Come on. Uh, 
Uh, that's what happened. It doesn't. Okay. Oh, no, no. That's not what's going on. Uh, maybe I'll change. Thickness. Blue. Or this is blue. Slightly thicker. So mm, we have uh, income there and expenses. Now, of course, uh, we all know um, two dots. I don't know why two dots. Okay. And we know that the uh, um, income comes from two sources, right? Primary source of income is sales revenue, right? Secondary uh, revenue. Did everything. <clears throat> okay, primary source of income, revenue. And the secondary source of income is investment income. But in this example, investment income. But in this example, will uh, there's no, oh, there's some investment. Good. Uh, so one, sales revenue, two, investment income. And here's a, an extra line item called returns and allowances. Okay, uh, it's understandable. You, know, you sold, you know, uh, you sold, you know, um, 195 thousand dollars worth of, you know, um, uh, products. Some of them. Uh, some of them will always be returned. You know, this is and return. Okay, maybe I use green. Um, and the return will be always expressed as negative. This is negative, right? Um, because it's, it will subtract from our revenue, right? And then uh, I told you in uh, Excel, um, three ways. Uh, negative can be expressed. One, of course, you know, uh, there will, you can have a minus sign, negative, right? Negative, minus sign. Or you can have red font, right? The number will be uh, in red font or parenthesis. Okay, that's negative. Now, <clears throat> and then so then our uh, net revenue, net revenue, it's called net revenue because, you know, uh, this will be, returns and allowances will be uh, subtracted, okay? Uh, we can find net revenue simply by uh, summing up, right? Simply by auto sum, right? Using auto sum, right? Uh, this will sum everything above it. Uh, hit auto sum, you'll get it, right? And this is automatically subtracted. Now, what is allowance then? I mean, you know, uh, returns and allowances. What's allowance? Uh... Is it like something like you, you might have bad debt or something like that? You have what? Can you say uh, that again? I didn't... Okay, okay, okay. I'm not sure, but but it's like sometimes like a, let's say if you have bad debt, so you ha you have like an allowance for like bad debt. Oh, oh no no it's uh it's slightly uh um uh, now um slightly different. I mean uh. It's like why I mean, you... not take any loan? We have to pay interest or something monthly 
why not take any loan from anyone or any from any organization no uh, okay uh, first of all um uh, stay focused and stay simple we are talking about income statement right uh bad debt uh it, it will be called it's a reserve there is a reserve for you know uh uh bad debt we cannot collect but then that's a um that's a uh, um, uh, uh, balance sheet uh, balance sheet business right not the income statement business um Allowance is simply a discount that we give to our supply channel members. So looking at this, you might think, you know, uh, are we talking about, you know, uh, uh, returns from our customers? And you think about just the retail store, but uh, uh, it could be retail, but, you know, uh, uh, if this is not retail, but, you know, uh, manufacturer, manufacturing, right? Um, and if you think only, you know, if you think, uh, B2C, B, uh, B2C, uh, then it is very, uh, limited, uh, because in B2C, I mean, uh, you bought something from Target and, uh, uh, you don't like it or it's a defective, you return it. Of course, they will, you know, refund your money. Um, but this doesn't, uh, that's return and allowances. Uh, allowance means, you know, uh, if you are a, a manufacturer, right? The manufacturer, uh, uh, a computer manufacturer like uh, Dell or Hewlett Packard will sell to the retailer like, you know, uh, um, Best Buy, okay? Um, and then... Uh, if they buy, if they, uh, let's say, to uh, encourage them to buy a huge quantity uh, from us, I mean, you know, uh, if they can buy like 10,000 computers, right? Um, if they normally buy a, a huge quantity I mean, to uh, encourage a huge uh, purchase, then you give some discount, right? Uh, so that discount is called, uh, but you know, think about it. This discount happens only in the B2B channel, B2B, business to business, right? Business to business. You don't call that uh, allowance in B2C because in B2C, uh, it's just called discount, right? In, in essence, it's basically, uh, uh, you can call it, you know, large volume, huge volume discount. But, you know, in, um, in B2C, generally, you know, uh, an individual customer, uh, let's say you go to a Target, uh, go to Target or Apple Store, how many do you buy? Uh, you go to Apple Store and you're going to buy, you know, uh, 10,000 uh, uh, iPhones. That's the, that, obviously, an individual customer in B2C, that never happens. It's a B2B thing. I mean, you know, uh, uh, some company buying, uh, some retailer buying 10,000, let's say, you know, uh, Hewlett Packard, Best Buy, buying 10,000 Hewlett Packard laptops. That's B2B thing, not a B2C thing, right? Uh, you buy at best, you know, you go to a grocery store, Walmart, or there is a particular a brand of uh, potato chips that you like, how many do you buy? At most, you know, probably five. A bag of chips is only about $3, and at most you buy five. But think about it. If uh, Walmart, buy Walmart or Walmart or, you know, uh, BJ's uh, buys, you know, a uh, huge quantity, uh, like, you know, a uh, uh, huge quantity, 10 containers, 10 containers of, you know, uh, potato chips, uh, they get, you know, a big discount, right? That's allowances. And think about it. Allowances, because we are giving discount, that uh, will reduce our revenue. That's why it's like returns, 
right? Basically, I told you it's in our uh, discount. Next. Um, and then uh, expenses, it falls in, it splits into two categories. One, CGS. Ah, this is hard to write with the mouse. One, CGS. Two, operating expenses. OPEX. Of course, we know CGS means, you know, CGS is also a uh, total variable cost, also called direct cost. And what, what does uh, uh, of course, you know, it's the uh, uh, a direct input cost, right? Uh, if I, if we made, you know, 1000 units of computer, And what's the uh, uh, in, uh, the co input cost uh, of capital labor and raw material, right? Capital labor and raw material per unit. And then, uh, and if you know this, right? Per unit direct cost we have, and then you know which is called AVC. Then AVC, average variable cost per unit, uh, and then uh, we can figure out, uh, because there are 10,000 units, times AVC, right? This is typically, you know, uh, manufacturing, right? Manufacturing. But if you look at uh, uh, CGS section here, it doesn't break down like that. Instead, it breaks down into beginning inventory, net purchase, Returns and allowances and ending inventory. Okay, so what is this? Uh, this is a typical example of uh, this is a typical example of uh, retail business. Retail. Why? Because retail doesn't retail um, doesn't make anything. Uh, uh, they generally, you know, uh, uh, they buy from the manufacturer, isn't that right? So all they want to know is what was our beginning inventory and then how much uh, more did we buy uh, this quarter? And uh, if we know ending inventory, then we can calculate um, the CGS. So um, interesting thing is, um, okay, so let me open... Where is it? Let me open this thing. All right. So here, think about it. Um, all the business, uh, let, let's think about a timeline. Let's make a time. Uh, yeah, what did I do? Um, no, I can use nothing. And let's say, because what is the basic operating uh, period or basic operating cycle? We talked about this. What's the basic operating cycle or the businesses? It's operating cycle, quarterly. what's the basic operating cycle? Quarterly, yes, quarterly. And who is this? DeAndre. DeAndre, okay. DeAndre, um, you got 0 0.5. Yeah, basic operating cycle is quarterly. So, um, uh, zero, uh, beginning of the first quarter, um, end of the first quarter. End of the first quarter is the beginning of the second quarter, right? Uh, end of the second quarter, which is the beginning of the third quarter, and end of the third quarter, end of the fourth quarter. Now, think about it. On average, right? Uh, average, let's say, uh, uh, our uh, 
quarterly quarterly sale average quarterly sale is let's say uh, hundred thousand dollars quarterly sale means that's quarterly revenue isn't it right sale means revenue I mean if you sold you know hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, goods then you know um, uh, that's hundred thousand dollars that's the sales revenue right sales revenue an average quarterly sale is let's say 100k and think about it at the beginning of the first quarter uh, you are not at uh, you are not your uh, your inventory is not zero you know, inventory is basically the uh, merchandise right uh, and if you're uh, retail is purely merchandise uh, and if you're a manufacturer if you're a manufacturer the inventory is uh, uh, if you're a manufacturer, inventories, uh, manufacturer's inventory will consist of basically raw material, uh, finished goods, and goods in process. Think about it. You're a manufacturer, so you will have to uh, start with the uh, uh, raw material, and then it goes into the production process, and then you know out of come out of the production process, uh, uh, the final products, finished goods, comes out. Finished goods come out, and uh, in in the middle, right? While it's still in the uh, man, uh, production process, is called work in progress or goods in process, right? So goods in process and work in progress is like half assembled, right? Half assembled product, right? Partially assembled, right? Uh, think about it. Um, tires, you know, uh, uh, dashboard, steering wheel. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, fuel fuel line, fuel system, engine, and you know, uh, these things go into the production process, right? These are raw materials. I mean, they came from raw materials, and then they go into the uh, assembly line, production process. And then at the end of that assembly line um, comes out a finished car. But then in the middle, while it's still in the uh, process, you see partially assembled a half half assembled car right then what do you call that that's called goods in process or work in progress right uh that's manufacturing right because uh so in manufacturing there are you know um uh raw material in manufacturer's inventory consists of raw material goods in process and finished goods but in retail, only finished goods. Think about it. Retail store will have only finished goods. And uh, at the beginning of the quarter, uh, uh, the inventory level is not zero. Inventory level is not zero. But it's like, <clears throat> excuse me. You'll be starting with something like, you know, uh, 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 what's left over from the uh, previous quarter, right? So you start, and if it is like 20K, right, you start with, you know, uh, 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 20K beginning inventory. That's called beginning inventory. But if you think about it, beginning inventory is the ending inventory of the previous quarter, right? But although you start with 20K, because the average sale, average quarterly sale is 100K, uh, this is not enough. So what do you do? You call, you call your supplier or your vendor, and you 80K, right? Uh, the merchandise worth 80K, right? So that you will, um, you will have, you know. Uh, 100k ready to sell uh, for that quarter. I mean, it's based on our average quarterly sale record. So uh, sometimes it could be more, sometimes it could be less. But you know, uh, at least you would have to uh, actual sale maybe above uh, or below. Uh, last quarter actual sale. I, I don't know. It could have been you know more than 100k, uh, or it could could have been less than 100k. But last quarter, 20K was left, right? That's called ending inventory from the last quarter. But it is the beginning inventory this quarter. So 
Uh, this 80K is called net purchase, right? That's called a net purchase. And uh, this 20K is, you know, beginning inventory, right? And then uh, uh, over the course of, um, and one, uh, uh, one quarter passes over the quarter, uh, course of this quarter, then uh, your inventory level will go down because as you sell, right, your inventory level goes down. And by the end of the uh, uh, first quarter, you may end up with like, you know, uh, uh, ending inventory of tw uh, uh, 20K or whatever. It could be a 15K, uh, but you will end up with some ending inventory. Sometimes it could be 0K. If ending inventory is 0K, then, um, uh, you know, um, you had a very, you know, um, a uh, busy month uh, and busy quarter, uh, the sale was. And then at next quarter, at the beginning, uh, you'll bring it up, you'll replenish, you'll bring it up to uh, another 100K. So if your ending inventory was 15K, uh, you're going to order 85K. That's the uh, net purchase. And then again, you draw down on that uh, uh, inventory. Ending inventory, it could be, you know, uh, 25K. And then next quarter, the net purchase will be 75K, something like that. And then think about it. It's going to repeat like this. So the uh, uh, ending inventory of a particular quarter is the same thing as the beginning inventory of the next quarter, right? And then when you are... When you uh, replenish uh, uh, your inventory by uh, with net purchase, uh, so together with together with beginning inventory and net purchase, that's called. So this 100k, when you when you bring your inventory level to 100k, that's called what? What is that called? Anyone? When you have 100K of inventory, right? What, should, what is that called? Net profit. What? Net that... what? What did you say? I'm sorry. Uh, you can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. But you know uh, you're breaking up. You said net something, right? You said net something. Profit. Huh? Net profit. No, it's not net profit. It cannot be net profit. Look, we're talking about how can it be net profit? You have to sell something and subtract the expenses. Then you will arrive at profit. But you are not. You haven't sold anything yet. You just have. Stockpiled. You just stockpiled. You understand? You just stockpiled your merchandise, right? To the full. You just stockpiled your merchandise to the full. You understand? What is 100K? It is average quarterly sale. So as you start the quarter, don't you think you would have to stockpile? In other words, you have to have... You have to have full stockpile of your merchandise for that quarter, for, to sell through that quarter, right? So it cannot be profit. Prof At this point, profit is completely, you know, uh, it will come at the end of this operating. Uh, uh, it will have to come at the end of this operation. We just haven't even started the operation. Right? Obviously, it cannot be. So what, what is that called? Is it called a purchase? No, no. Purchase is this. Right? Uh, we had, uh, we started with, you know, beginning inventory of 25K. Uh, and then uh, to uh, to replenish, right? I mean, to uh, complete 
to have you know a, a full you know hundred k worth of merchandise. We uh, purchased, we ordered you know uh, uh, seventy five k worth of merchandise, right? So that's the purchase. So hundred k is called what? Uh, that is called you know uh, GAS. Why is someone always saying profit? I've been, you know, emphasizing. I've been, you know, even shouting. I've been raising my voice to explain that profit is not at this. It's not even the stage where the profit comes in. Profit is at the end of this whole process. Profit happens at, profit is at, profit shows up at the end of this whole process. Right? We are just beginning our operation and the profit will only appear at the end of the operating, uh, at the end of operation. We are just at the beginning of the... And I said this is called GAS, even after saying, even if, even after me saying that, If you heard me, I already called it GAS. I already called, how can then, you know, profit come up at that point? So, and I even, you know, uh, um, someone said net profit already uh, a while ago. So I said, I explained why it is not net profit already. And then so, uh, another person says profit again. So that means, you know, you didn't hear anything. You didn't hear anything. And please think logically, please think logically. <clears throat> So to do this, I'll have to open the door. Okay. okay, maybe not this, but you know, see, I mean, think about it. Profit. Uh, look, we are here. We are here at, at this stage. We are here. This is where we are. Not even, uh, not even, uh, um, oh, come on, go back. Um, we are basically here, right? Beginning inventory and net purchase, right? And think logically, right? Please think logically. So this is before selling anything, right? And we, we are not even, and through all this process, then if we, after all this process, we arrive at this, and that is net profit. But we are here. We are just here. How can it be net profit? Right? Just think, please think logically. So, uh, again, um, so beginning inventory and uh, net purchase is called GAS. Does anyone? Anyone knows? Does anyone know what GAS means? What that stands for? That's obviously it's an acronym. It's an acronym. Does anyone know what that stands for? GAS. Listen, I I, I released the uh, uh, pre-recorded videos, like at least you know uh, two days ahead of our scheduled class, right? But it can be many days more because. 
We don't have class during the weekend, but even during the weekend, I still release the videos, lecture videos. So you have to catch up. You have to uh, study the video ahead of time. And then if you, we are, uh, and think about it, we are, um, this is the third week, third week. What does that mean? We are here, right? This is the third week. We are, uh, we are here, uh, oops. Actually, uh, practically this should, uh, uh, but then, you know, uh, uh, this is the, uh, so from uh, second week is over. From here is the third week, Wednesday, uh, tomorrow. It's the third week, uh, third week. And from the 10th, that's the fourth week, fourth week. And then, so think about it. We are entering the third week tomorrow and we are really, um, um, as I said, I need your cooperation to complete this because it's not just the co cooperation is not something, you know, uh, um, uh, passive. You have to actively study, actively, right? And at this point, uh, if you think you're like a little bird, you know, uh, just, you know, uh, waiting to be fed. No, that you cannot, we cannot do this that way. Of course, it's a competition. Someone who is, you know, more aggressively, someone who is more studying aggressively will win. And someone who is just passive will lose. You have to, you know, um, so by now, th these videos have been already released already, you know, uh, uh, many days ago. So if you have kept up with the uh, videos, you should know now. You should, you know, what is GAS? Anyone? Is it government, government auditing standards? Uh, government auditing standards, yeah. I mean, it's an acronym, so it can, uh, there can, it can mean many things. Uh, but, you know, government uh Auditing standards, uh, uh, what does it have to do with the uh, income statement? I mean, uh, government auditing standards would, uh, of course, examine, it will examine the income statement of uh, General company accounting filing. system. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, I'm talking about, uh, I th there is generally accepted accounting principles, you know, uh, GAP, G-A-A-P. Uh, but then it has nothing to do with, think about it, beginning inventory plus net purchase, right? Beginning inventory plus net purchase, my question is, it's called, I mean, think about it, beginning inventory plus net purchase, is it general accounting, uh, general auditing, government auditing uh, principle? A government auditing system, huh? General beginning inventory plus net purchase. Please think logically. Think logically, please. Um, in other words, GAS means uh, in in this example, this hundred K is the GAS, right? But what is this hundred K? Is the Merchandise you have full uh, merchandise you have uh, replenished. I mean, stockpiled. The merchandise you have stocked up, right, in your warehouse or in your store. Isn't it right? This hundred thousand dollars is the uh, dollar value of the merchandise you stocked up in your warehouse, right? at the beginning of the quarter. Then what are those merchandise for? What are you going to do with those merchandise? You will sell them? Yes. And who said that? You who said that? Elina. Elina. Huh? Elina. 
Elena, yes, finally, someone who thinks <laughs> with common sense. Okay, Elena, you got five, uh, 0 0.5 points. Yes, think about it. You stocked up your warehouse or store with this, you know, $100,000 worth of merchandise because why? Because on average, the quarterly, average quarterly sale is $100,000. So you're expecting that this uh, you need to have, you need to stock up your store or warehouse with $100,000 worth of merchandise to, you know, sell through throughout this quarter. You understand? That's a very sensible thing, isn't that right? So then the uh, the name of that is GAS. Then what does GAS stand for? It's, it stands for goods available for sale. Goods available for sale. You understand? The, doesn't it make sense that the story is complete now? Goods available for sale. Right? Government auditing standards? I mean, what does government auditing standards have to do with the merchandise you stocked up in your warehouse? You're just stocking up your warehouse or store, right? Up to $100,000 worth because that's the uh, expected sale for the quarter. Right? Makes sense. You need to have, because on average, quarterly sale is 100000 So this quarter, you are expecting to sell the goods up to $100,000, more or less. More or less. Okay? And what, so then, calling it goods available for sale goods available for sale isn't it quite you know um natural i mean natural and uh so think about it uh that's called although i didn't put it there beginning inventory plus net purchase what is called what's it called goods available for sale okay GAS, goods available for sale, right? And then what should happen next? What happens next? Anyone? One? So you have $100,000 worth of uh, merchandise. So what should happen next? You will sell it out. You put it on the market to be sold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Who is this? Who's this? Elina. Okay. Again, Elena. So, Elena, you got another 0 0.5. Yes, you have to sell. In other words, what happens next? Sale happens next. Isn't that right? Sale happens next. And you will get sales revenue coming in. Sales revenue. Of course, in our example, our um, it's not $100,000. $100,000, our GAS, according to this, will be at least $136,000. Don't you think? 136,000. And you might wonder, from 136,000, then check the numbers. From 136,000, how can you generate the sales revenue of 195,000? Right? Uh, I mean, if you have, think about it, if you have hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of merchandise the maximum sale that can come out of it shouldn't it be you know only hundred and fifty thousand dollars isn't it right yes mm -hmm. right i mean the common sense will tell you i mean uh, or logic will tell you i mean if you have to the total value of the merchandise that you have is one hundred fifty thousand then the maximum sale that can come out, sales dollar, sales revenue, dollar amount of sales revenue that can come out of it uh, should be, you know, no more than 150,000. Isn't that right? So how is this? Uh, it's because uh, inventory is, inventory is expressed uh, in 
cost. Inventory is expressed in cost, whereas revenue is expressed in price. Isn't that right? Does everyone remember? I was I was hoping. Uh, uh, okay. Does everyone remember that revenue is? How do we define revenue? Revenue is what? Quantity revenue time, is what? Quantity time price. Yes, price times quantity sold. Isn't that right? Price times quantity sold. And who's this? Uh, Mei Chen. Okay. Uh, I, I, okay. I will have to keep in mind <laughs> because you, your name is spelled with Q and uh, phonetically I always try to write with CH, but uh, okay. Um, yeah, revenue is price times quantity. So that means, you know, uh, uh, and uh, what is the, uh, 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 what is the CGS? What is CGS? Uh, course of a good show. I, I know, I know. Uh, cost of goods sold, but, you know, um, mathematical definition. So is it like a beginning inventory plus purchase minus ending inventory? Oh yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. I'm gonna, but that was not my question. You're gonna, but you know, I'll give you one for that. Uh, that we, I will come to that later. In other words, uh, CGS is the same thing as uh, if you think about the revenue, then we also need to think about the uh, cost side, isn't that right? Because revenue minus cost is profit, right? But then cost has two things, you know, uh, uh, CGS and operating expenses, right? Also, income has two. Uh, two parts, revenue, sales revenue, and investment income. Isn't that right? Investment income. But ignore investment income because not all the companies have investment income. But all the companies must sell something. And all the companies have, regardless, they will have direct cost and indirect cost. CGS is direct cost, operating expenses, indirect cost. But again, CGS is called also total variable cost. Remember that? Isn't it right? Yeah. Yes. And operating expenses roughly uh, uh, total fi uh, fixed cost, right? Total fixed cost, right? And then how is var total variable cost defined? It's um, average variable cost times quantity. Yes, average variable cost times quantity. In other words, uh, okay, that's DeAndre, right? So DeAndre, I'm going to give you a 0 0.5. Uh, now think about it. Suppose you are Best Buy. You know what Best Buy is, right? Electronics, consumer, electronics retailer. Uh, and let's say Best Buy sells computers. So the Best Buy, Best Buy is selling uh, a laptop, uh, let's say a Hewlett Packard, whatever, you know, Model X, right? Hewlett Packard model. Uh, what's the price? 500. Okay. And then, uh, then what is this cost? The cost is, think about it. They buy it from Hewlett Packard for probably, they buy it from Hewlett Packard. at about $300. They buy for about $300. Isn't that right? You're not, no, no, no retailer buys, pays in $100 uh, for the merchandise from the vendor and sell it at $100. Right? That, that goes without saying. That's stupid. I mean, you, this difference is called gross margin, right? Gross margin, gross profit margin, right? Uh, 200 so think of it that way i mean if you sell 1000 units 1000 units of that computer your revenue is 500k isn't that right and then um the cost of those 1000 computers total variable cost or cgs 
that will be 300K, right? This will be a 500K. So think about it. That's the idea. I mean, um, although, so think about it. Even with, because all the inventory is expressed in cost, inventory is expressed in cost, so even if the total uh, GAS, GAS, you know, uh, uh, value, total value of goods, merchandise available for sale is only uh, like $150,000, the sales revenue can be greater than $150,000. Does that make sense, everyone? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Now, now I'm talking to, <laughs> before this, I felt like, talking to the wall, okay? And then what comes next is sale. You have, so, but then sale, that's sale. Uh, but then the, um, uh, but then when, uh, again, the other side of the sale, the other side of the sale is CGS. If you think about it, the other side of sales revenue is CGS. You understand that? It's like, CGS and revenue are two sides of the same coin, right, everyone? Why? Because, look, go back to this example. You're selling this computer for $500, but the cost to you, right, average variable cost, in other words, you know, um, is 300, right? You bought, you bought, this computer from Hewlett Packard for 300, but sell this computer for 500. Retail price, right? Manufacturer's price, but manufacturer's price is cost to you, right? It's actually called your know, X factory price. X factory. What does that mean? X means you know you're leaving you know X X husband X wife, <laughs> right? X factory. Exodus. What does X, Exodus mean? You know, uh, uh, Israelites, right? Uh, uh, escaped uh, from Egypt, right? Exodus, X, X factory. This is the price leaving the factory, X for price. But that is the cost to you. That's the cost, right, to Best Buy. And then, so if you sold 1,000 units, your revenue is 500K, but your total variable cost or CGS is 300K, 300K. So it's the two, uh, two sides of the same coin, right? Exactly, revenue and cost are two sides of the same coin. So this is the revenue, but what is the other side? So it, we should know the uh, cost, right? We should know the cost, but here uh, they, don't, they didn't put it in that order. After GAS, so this is GAS, instead of CGS, they listed ending inventory. They just put, so don't you think this is weird? Why? Because, um, think about it. Isn't it weird? I mean, the, uh, the order of happening, how it happens first, you will have beginning inventory. And then there will be net purchase. And together it's called the GAS. And then sale happens. So if sale is 500, sales revenue is $500,000, the cost side of that, cost side of that, uh, that's CGS, right? So you'll have to, uh, uh, if the sale was 500K, cost of goods sold, think about it literally. What does that mean, cost of goods sold? Goods sold means revenue, isn't it right? Dollar value of goods sold is revenue, isn't it right? So sometimes uh, CGS is also called cost of revenue. Sometimes, yeah, what does that mean? CGS is the cost side of the revenue. Does that make sense? 
And there's the cost side of the revenue. That's why cost of revenue. The same thing. So, yeah, because it happens in this order, chronologically, chronologically, um, you have GIS and sale happens. So uh, what should come next uh, is CGS. Forget about the returns and allowances that, you know, it's, it's minor compared to the, it's relatively uh, less important. Then if you subtract CGS from GIS, then you arrive at ending inventory, right? You arrive at ending inventory. Think about it. That's, that's the logical, logical, uh, logically, that's the chronological. That's the timeline. That's how it happens. Uh, that's the sequence. It happens. Right? That's the sequence. It happens. Uh, uh, according, you know, uh, in time, through time. But, so this should, it should be like that. But what is it showing you? I mean, uh, instead of doing this, they are showing you beginning inventory, net purchase, which is GAS. And then suddenly, uh, next should come CGS, but they have ending inventory here, and then have CGS here. So this is this is um, weird. Why isn't it happening uh, in chronological order, right? Why did they flip it here? Hmm? Now there are two reasons. You know, uh, one uh, first of all, think about it. Uh, CGS is the conclusion of this section. It has to be the conclusion of this sex section, isn't that right? It has to be the conclusion of this section. You understand? Um, CGS has to be the conclusion of this section. Isn't that right? Um, why? Uh, over and over. Let me put something else here so I can... I don't have to... Uh, Now let's think about it. I, 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 I. The con conclusion of this section should be um, because income we know uh, revenue. Sales revenue uh, yeah, 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 yeah. and investment income. So look, sales revenue is the conclusion of the uh, uh, revenue section, right? If there is no investment income, uh, net revenue is the conclusion of the income section, income, right? And then expenses, CGS, is the conclusion of the direct cost section. CGS is the uh, conclusion of the direct cost section. You need to, you want this number, I mean, uh, to represent that you know, direct cost. And then uh, operating expenses is the conclusion of the uh, uh, fixed cost section. Right, do you understand? I hear nobody. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because of Right, oh, good. Because of the reason, we you flip it so that this will be the uh, this will come out, this will come at the bottom as the conclusion, right? And then uh, so that then you can add CGS with the operating expenses and then you can subtract it from the income. And then second reason is uh, you uh, you don't. Uh, think about it. You are, uh, if you are a manufacturer, or let's say you ha you have a business. You have a business. Do you want anybody else 
third party or IRS or your competitor to know what your true cost is? Would you want them to know what your true cost is? No. Hmm? No, of course not. Why? Because if you, uh, if uh, IRS knows, if IRS knows uh, what your uh, true cost is, right, then um, they can easily tell whether you are trying to cheat on taxes or not. I mean, every business has an incentive to minimize their taxes. Don't you think? If possible, you want to pay the least possible taxes, then maximum possible taxes. Don't you think? And then think about it. Uh, the income statement, uh, when businesses report taxes, basically they are showing their income statement. They are, of course, uh, they, uh, it's the uh, CPAs, public accountants, right? CPAs. or uh, accounting firms, uh, CPA firms, that audit, audit your you know, companies, right? Audit uh, the firms tax, taxes, right? And then CPA firm will uh, certify. They will, you know. In other words, a CPA firm has uh, the accounting firms have two uh, dual mandate. One, they serve I, uh, they serve IRS. I mean, they have to uh, report to IRS that your tax return, your tax report is true. They will have to certify that to uh, 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 because IRS cannot audit every company, right? IRS can. There's no no resources, no time, no. Um, so that's that's where the uh, these accounting firms uh, come in. They inspect, they examine, right? They inspect the uh, uh, tax reporting of uh, companies, and uh, basically, you know, uh, 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 report to IRS that oh, their tax is good, their tax, they are honest. Okay, but then think about it. They, so on behalf of IRS, they do that on behalf of IRS. But then, who's their client? Who's their client? Their client is farms, you. So if they are, think about it, there's a conflict of interest here. Isn't that right? There's a conflict of interest. You understand? If the accounting firms serve the IRS too well, then they will be too strict on, you know, uh, they will be like, oh, this company is cheating. They will do that, right? They have to be punished. They will be like that. But then what happens to them? Those accounting firms will get no client. They will get no client. Don't you think? So in other words, uh, so if they serve the best interest of IRS, then they will get they will get no client. And if they if they serve the best interest of their client, then they will lose their license. Isn't that right? If they serve the best interest of the client, right? They will. That means then you know the they will help these companies to uh, evade the taxes. Then you know uh, they will lose their license and they will go to jail. So uh, they are at really at the intersection of they are really at the crossroad of uh, conflict of interest. Understand? Now, but anyway, um, what the uh, um, think about it? Um, income statement is basically um, here. You understand? The taxes will be uh, showing in the income statement, right? Uh, revenue, investment income, CGS, uh, OPEX. So that's why, you know, it has to be the uh, CGS has to be the uh, 
conclusion of this section. Uh, and then subtract is called operating profit, operating income, or EBIT. Okay, you should be. And then you will have to pay interest, pay interest, and then uh, taxable income, or EBT. So then some percentage, some tax rate, some percentage of taxable income will be taxes. That's the taxes, right? So uh, basically, uh, you want, if possible, you want to pay as little taxes as possible within the, uh, of course, uh, within the legal bounds. I mean, if, if you go even beyond, you know, beyond the legal bounds, then of course, then uh, uh, you'll be in big trouble. But how do you, so think about it. If C, let's say, how, uh, if this goes up, if CGS is higher, if, think about it. If this goes up, if this goes up, all, all expenses, I mean, basically if CGS is higher, OPEX is higher, this will go down, isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Then if this goes down, also this goes down too, right? EBT goes down too, right? And then some tax rate, percentage of that is tax, right? At earnings before taxes times percent, uh, the tax rate will be the taxes. So if this goes down, taxes will go down. So think about it. You might wonder, oh, why would anybody want, any company want their cost to go up? No, no one wants their cost to go up, but they want to make it look higher, right? If possible, they want to make it look higher than it really is. Don't you think? In other words, uh, their CGS is not that, uh, their CGS is only, you know, uh, 3,300 uh, K. Their CGS is 300 K. But if possible, they don't want to show that true cost, but they want to show, show it as 350 K if possible. Right? And you might also then, you know, that's cheating on taxes. I mean, that's tax. Uh, there are some legal, uh, uh, legal, what should I say? I mean, you know, uh, um, allowable. I mean, IRS allows up to a certain uh, point. There's a legal, you know, legally allowed uh, techniques that can uh, do this. Um, Called, you know, LIFO, FIFO, you know, all this. Um, so think about it. Um, they don't want to show what this is, but they want to, uh, uh, the common sense uh, is, they don't want to show what it is. Uh, they want to, um, of course, uh, they want, uh, they will always say, so what? what is your true cost? Oh, it's business, uh, it's trade secret. It's business trade secret. What does that mean? Uh, right? It's trade uh, business secret. You, we, don't know, um, uh, we don't have to tell you. Uh, and even if they are summoned to the court, they still say it's trade secret. You summon Donald Trump to the court, and, you know, so why, is, why isn't Donald Trump all these years, you know, they've been asking for his tax return. Remember? Since before he was running for the president, the entire nation asked to see his tax report. But then always te legal technicality. He always, you know, dodged it. You know, it's still, um, you know, um, uh, uh, it's under like you know um, uh, investigation. So I cannot, you know, uh, we cannot release it. Blah blah blah. All these years, they haven't, you know, legal, uh, the investigation uh, didn't get anywhere, and he, but why? So, 
think about it. Even you, so, uh, of course, if it, uh, at some point, you know, um, uh, if the they run out, if they run out of legal loopholes, you know, uh, there will be no more, you know, uh, ways to uh, avoid uh, the subpoena. But um, uh, generally, companies don't want to reveal their true cost. So then think about it, doing it this way, um, beginning in uh, beginning inventory, uh, net purchase, and then ending inventory. And then this will give you CGS, but then uh, you might wonder, I mean, if you know uh, beginning inventory net and uh, net purchase, if you know that, and if you know ending inventory, I mean, isn't it obvious? No, it's not quite. It's not quite like that, um, because ending inventory values have a range, you know, uh, uh, because uh, depending on you know what inventory valuation method you use, uh, five four life four or weighted average cost. Weighted average cost, it can, you know, it can vary. I mean, so think about it. If you make this small, if you make this look small, if you make this look small, this will look bigger than it really is. Make sense? You understand? And if this is, if this looks bigger than it really is, if this is bigger than it really is, it's gonna lower taxable income. I mean, taxable income is uh, EBT. And if taxable income goes down, of course, taxes go, goes down. So once again, they are not telling you, they will not show straightforward what is their true uh, uh, direct cost. Uh, one way you can guess is using, you know, uh, 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 it's the cost ratio, you know, uh, uh, again, um, it's an appro still approximation because uh, uh, still, uh, now you understand why, you see why, huh? okay, so I'm going to uh, think, oh, that took a lot of time, and I think it's, um, it's a good time to take a break, it's seven, already seven, oh, seven twice, so let's take a 10 minute break and we'll come back at uh, like 7.30, about 7.30, okay? Uh, let's take a 10 minute break.
All right, we're back. We're back. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, we were okay. We're back now. Um, so, uh, where was I? Um, back here. Um, now you understand why CGS uh, is here. And of course, uh, why the order between CGS and inv uh, ending inventory is switched, right? And then uh, finding, uh, and of course, returns and allowances in this case is um, uh, it's the return that we made. It's the return we made. It's not the uh, our customer's return, but it is the return we made. Uh, why? Because the return here, return here is the return from our customers. But this is the return we made to our vendors, right? To our suppliers or to our manufacturers, right? So if you think about it, uh, returns and allowances are uh, expressed as negative because here, if it is negative, because it's cash uh, outflow, isn't it right? Returns and allowances is cash outflow. We have to uh, refund. But then cash, this is actually not cash outflow, but it's actually cash inflow. Isn't that right? Why? Because this whole section, old, old, although they are written, uh, although they are written as positive numbers, but they are expensive. Expenses means expenses mean basically uh, that's the uh, uh, cash outflow. Expenses mean that's the money we are paying. But you know, this is a negative. This means it's a negative expense. If it is negative expense, then it's the cash coming in, cash inflow, right? So um, if we, again, using auto sum, right? We use auto sum, and then it's going to automatically sum everything above it. Whatever will be subtracted will be subtracted, right? Automatically. Whatever is negative will be subtracted. There you go. This is our CGS. And then uh, uh, operating expenses. And I also... Um, uh, this is my notation, right? This is my notation. Nobody in real actual income statement, uh, nobody annotates like that. <laughs> nobody, you know, uh, says uh, kindly, uh, these are expenses unrelated to production. Uh, this is the expense that's directly related to production. Uh, they don't write it out like that. Now, first, you know, uh, in other words, operating expenses doesn't go up or down with the production level because it's unrelated uh, to production. Rent, rent doesn't matter. Rent doesn't change with the production level. Utility doesn't change with the production level. Salaries, uh, it's relatively, uh, 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 you know, a, f a fixed amount. I mean, you know, uh, if you have 100 employees, uh, some of them are production workers, some of them are clerical staff. I mean, if you're a manufacturer, you'll have the ratio might be 80, 80 to 20. 80% 80 of your uh, employees are production staff, production workers, and 20% might be uh, uh, administrative or vice versa. I mean, if you, if you are a, uh, if you're a retailer, 80% uh, will be sales force, right? Sales, uh, sales force, and then 20% um, uh, would be purely administrative. Uh, but anyway, uh, salaries, uh, base salaries, I mean, you know, uh, uh, other than, you know, um, uh, overtime, you know, base salaries will be relatively constant. Depreciation is also relatively constant, and uh, it will take a lot of time to talk about depreciation, but I believe I, uh, depreciation is actually, you know, uh, uh, artificial. It's artificial, so it will be, you know, uh, uh, relatively constant. I got depreciation from uh, 
And if you look into this cell, it's pointing to uh, B13. And what is B13? It's, it's depreciation in the uh, 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 balance sheet. It's the depreciation in the balance sheet. Okay? And depreciation in the balance sheet. Uh, uh, obviously, it's a negative number. Uh, um, so to express that, to put it in the uh, income statement, uh, I had to uh, put a minus sign in front of it uh, to turn it into a positive number. But again, what is positive expense? Positive, positive expense is actually money going out. It's cash outflow. Isn't that right? It's cash outflow. Not, um, negative expense is cash inflow, actually. R&D, marketing, they are relatively... Uh, so... Uh, adding, uh, we can add all of those numbers using auto sum, right? Using auto sum, we add all those numbers, right? We come to this. And then, so finally, we arrive at operating income or EBIT. So operating income is basically what? Operating income is um, from net revenue, right? We subtract these two. So subtract to subtract those two, uh, I'll first sum, sum these two, right? This plus this, right? Some of these two numbers, right? Everyone is okay. Everyone is okay with that up to that point. Everyone is okay. Okay, good. Good, all right. Hit enter. And oh, then what a surprise. Operating income is negative. If it is already, you might want, you might say, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Of course it's possible. If you have more expenses than the income, of course, if it will be negative. And if, if it is negative, now you're a problem. There's a problem. You cannot, there's an interest that you owe. You cannot pay. If you cannot pay the interest, uh, uh, they will they will take you to the bankruptcy court, right? Uh, who the lenders, the creditors, who to whom uh, uh, the interest is owed, right? But you know, before we get there, um, everyone should understand uh, this is called operating activity, right? The operating activity is. So, um, okay, uh, oops, okay, now, from, uh, so, where is the scroll bar? I don't, this is the, this is crazy thing. I don't see a scroll bar and I have to, Scroll, um, uh, I will have to then kill this off for a while and, okay. Uh, so, from here, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, do it. I'm gonna use my finger and so yeah, from here to EBIT, right? To here to EBIT. Ah, uh, don't do that, please. From there to uh, from you see. Um, from here to here is called operating activity. So operating activity is basically uh, income statement income statement activity. It's basically income statement activity, right? Uh, and operating activity is um, uh, all well expressed in uh, all the companies, right? All the businesses engage in three types of activities. Okay, now 
not here. I'm gonna uh, from uh, I'll have to put it here. All the businesses engage in three types of activities. One, operating activity. Of course, without operating activity, there is no there is no profit, right? Uh, there is no revenue. There is no profit. Two, um, investing activity. Investing activity is basically uh, uh, the activity uh, the companies you know engage in to acquire assets, like you know production assets, right? Like you know uh, capital assets, uh, plant and equipment, right? Plant and equipment, machinery, acquire activities of acquiring. Uh, production equipment. I mean, in other words, uh, without the uh, uh, without the uh, plant and equipment, there is no production, right? And basically, uh, uh, when we say assets, we talked about this, uh, there are physical assets and uh, liquid assets. Physical assets are uh, basically uh, also called long-term assets and non-current assets and those uh, fixed assets go by many names um but physical assets basically you know uh, uh or the uh, backbone of the uh economy think about it without physical assets uh physical capital uh nothing can be made nothing can be produced uh countries like you know uh, saudi arabia oil producing countries they have oil, but you know, without without the uh, uh, the pumps, right? Oil rigs, you know, the oil rig equipment, they cannot pump up pump up the oil, and if they cannot pump up the oil, they cannot sell oil. I mean, most of the OPEC countries, their ma their major source of their national income, major. Their major source of GDP is oil. What else do they make? They make nothing. They make nothing. They don't make cars. They don't make computers. They don't. There's nothing like that. Every industry is basically, you know, uh, uh, everything they import, right? But the only thing they make and export is the oil. But then. They they never make they don't make oil rigs I mean they don't make you know uh, uh, pumps they don't make the uh, oil rig equipment they all import it right but that's uh, but the oil oil Saudi oil company uh, Saudi oil companies without having that plant and equipment uh, there is no operating activity right. In other words, without investing activity, there is no opportunity. Uh, hello, were you saying were you saying that to me? Hmm? Uh, I'm sorry. No, I don't think sorry. so. I don't think so. I didn't think so. <laughs> I had an argument with my sister. Just <laughs> yeah, just make sure your microphone is muted, right? When you are not uh, yes, professor, uh, talking I'm so to sorry. Friend. No problem, no problem. Now, then the third activity is financing activity. Financing activity. What is financing activity? So, uh, how do they how do they uh, how do they raise capital for investing activity? In other words. Uh, plant and equipment, land and building, those, you know, uh, fixed assets. It costs money. It costs a lot of, you know, uh, uh, money, right, to uh, invest in the uh, plant and equipment. So how do they raise that capital? How do they raise that money capital um, to do this? That's called financing activity. How do they do that? By selling stocks 
or by selling bonds. Make sense? Selling bonds means borrowing money. By borrowing money or by, you know, uh, inviting uh, uh, investors who are willing to take the risk, right? Investors that don't, you know, ask for uh, 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 that don't, you know, uh, uh, put a binding contract on you to pay you something, but, you know, they are willing to uh, uh, take the risk. I mean, it, it, if your, you know, company is doing well, they will do well. If the company is doing uh, badly, they lose, you know, uh, a lot. That's what, you know, investing is. But anyway, um, so by selling stocks and bonds, right, they raise capital to support investing activity. And then through uh, by investing activity, uh, uh, investing activity can make operating activity possible, right? Makes sense. All right. Uh, so, Uh, again, uh, so from here to from income to operating income or operating profit, even, that's uh, operating activity. And then you have to pay. Uh, and so here, uh, R&D expense, I'm not going to go into that. Uh, these percentages, you know, they are generally, you know, uh, R&D is like certain percentage of the revenue, right? Certain percentage of the revenue. And you can... Uh, uh, L21 times J3, and what is J3 uh, revenue? So that's right. Marketing expense, uh, pretty much the you know, same um, interest. Why do you have interest? You have to pay interest. Why? Because you had you sold bond, you have debt. So that is expressed. That is shown in the balance sheet. In the balance sheet. Uh, liabilities and equity uh, side, uh, think about it. Um, you sold $2.25 million worth of bond and you uh, took out $3.5 million worth of loan. So these are long-term debt, long-term debt. And the long-term, so, so um, I already found the sum, some of these two, right? You see? some of those two numbers. Now, you borrowed money, you have to pay interest. So um, let's say mortgage interest and bo uh, bond, interest on the bond may not be the same, but let's, let's assume that we could find some average number. So on average, the interest rate is, let's say, uh, okay. Here's that uh, uh, 2.5. That's annual, annual interest, right? Always the uh, rate is, always the rate is annual. And if this statement, all these financial statements are annual, you can simply multiply uh, that. But then if this is quarterly, then you'll have to make adjustment. So I think this is a quarterly statement because that, that was probably the uh, my assumption. Uh, so here, let's take a look at, um, if I look at, oh, this is annual. Okay, if this is annual, then that's too much. So uh, I think making it quarterly might be, um, might make it uh, look uh, a little better because uh, so annual depreciation is you know, uh, 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 up to this, that's annual depreciation. And uh, if you multiply uh, by quarter or divide it by four, okay, once it is like this quarterly, uh, it becomes much more manageable now or uh, still we are uh, <laughs> we are like this i mean our operating uh, income is still negative but uh, depreciation got much smaller right 
I don't want to necessarily make it look, I don't want to necessarily make it look positive, but let's say our operating income is like this. And then um, uh, because our EBIT is negative, we won't be able to pay interest. But the interest is uh, our debt. Where is our debt? Uh, this is our total debt, right? Long-term debt times and annually you pay 2.5%, but uh, this is quarterly. So I'll divide it by four or multiply uh, one over four. Then this is the interest this quarter I have to pay. But then I have, I can't pay because I'm already, you know, uh, uh, I'm already deep into, you know, uh, loss. I mean, I don't, you know, um, how do I pay this? So um, think about it. Taxable income, uh, you can have taxable income only when you have, you know, uh, uh, basically, if this is positive, uh, I mean, what is taxable income? Taxable income is uh, this minus this. I mean, you have to, but then, obviously, um, it's more negative than that. It's deeper, you know. Uh, now, that means we cannot pay we cannot pay interest, we cannot pay taxes, right? We cannot pay, but our interest will, our interest will follow us around. I mean, um, think about it. A cup, um, you can, you can uh, skip a couple of entertainments. I mean, your creditors will probably, uh, your creditors can, uh, they will want to work it out. They will, they will want to talk talk about it. And if you can work out a, a plan, uh, then that workout is called Chapter 11, Chapter 11 Bankruptcy. Uh, chapter 11 Bankruptcy is basically, you know, uh, 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 they let you, uh, they let you continue. But you know, then they will want to. Uh, they will be um, uh, monitoring. I mean, they will. They will appoint. They will appoint a uh, a manager who will uh, oversee the company's operation, and this manager will have uh, the full control over the company's operation, because if the company is not making uh, the manager will try to bring this up to positive. And then any positive earnings the company makes, then they will, uh, the, the uh, manager will first uh, use that to pay off uh, the interest, right? Uh, so this is possible because, you know, uh, that, that, it's a court ruling, Chapter 7 bankruptcy or Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It's basically a court's judgment. And if the court's judgment uh, declares um, bankruptcy, then existing, share, uh, existing uh, management is all uh, fired. Existing management is all kicked out. Because existing management is... Uh, basically, think about it. Who does the management work for? The, the very, you know, huh? The owners. The owners, yes. In other words, shareholders. That's the Andre, right? The Andre. Uh, I'll give you zero point five. Yes, it, the management works for the best interest of the uh, shareholders, the owners, because they are hired by the. Uh, uh, owners, and if they don't serve the best interest of the owners, they will be uh, fired, and uh, new uh, uh, management will be hired by the 
board of directors, board of directors, right? But once the ba bankruptcy is declared, all the existing management will be kicked out because now one, uh, after bankruptcy judgment, the company will have to work in the best interest. The priority, the priority for this company is to pay the accrued interest and principal, accrued interest and principal. So uh, the court appointed management, the court appointed manager will uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 oversee the company, company's operation and will do uh, their best to uh, make this positive, make this number positive. And whatever that uh, positive number, they, uh, it will go first to pay this. Okay, it will go first. But anyway, at this point, uh, they cannot pay any interest. And so the taxable income is negative. Now, if the taxable income is negative, do they pay taxes? Of course not. I mean, if your taxable income is uh, non-positive, like zero or negative, no, tax to, no, no taxes to pay. But again, tax rate is 35%. That's annual. That's annual. And... Um, If I teach this, the student, uh, some students will just, you know, uh, without analytical mind, without any, uh, uh, without any, you know, uh, critical thinking, they will just go ahead, you know, mechanically, just punch in the numbers, you know, oh, uh, so this is taxable income, um, and then this is tax rate, so quarterly, quarterly, uh, we're working on the quarterly basis quarterly uh, uh, times, okay, times. Uh, so they think um, they will do this. But then what is the result? Negative, negative 13,000 something. Now here's, uh, use your good sense. You Use your good sense. Can there be negative tax? What is the meaning of negative tax? I mean, if no, it, there can be no negative taxes. Uh, and who said no? Who said no? DeAndre. DeAndre. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'll give you zero point. Uh, DeAndre, you sighed. Uh, you're tired of you know <laughs> racking up points. Huh? Um, look, there can be no negative tax. What? How can the negative tax means you know uh, IRS owes you? Oh, what what happened? What did I, what did I just do? But that's ridiculous. I mean, uh, if you don't have any positive income, then you just simply don't have any tax to pay. It doesn't mean you know uh, government owes you taxes, right? So um, everyone understands this, you know, that's not a big, you know, uh, that's not really uh, uh, any secret. So how to prevent, how to prevent this from happening? I can do, uh, in other words, um, without how to prevent just mechanical uh, input, how to prevent mechanically inputting, you know, uh, uh, so you can do this. Uh, oh, I. It's an if command, and if command comes in very handy, uh, in many situations. So, it, by using uh, if command, that means if, and uh, you select this. If this cell J twenty eight is greater than zero, that means what? If, if the taxable income is positive number, right? Comma, uh, comma means uh, then, right? Or and, if this is if this number is a positive number, in other words, the taxable income, positive taxable income, then we will then next what will, will you do? This times tax rate. Calculate the tax. 
right? Times one over four quarterly tax. Okay, if that is positive, that command will be executed. Next comma, comma, that means otherwise. Otherwise, if that's not the case, then zero. Right? In other words, if this is not positive number, then the taxes will be zero. Then hit enter. It's going to automatically pick zero because that's what the computer is told to do. If this cell is positive, then, right? Uh, this times tax rate times uh, quarter because it's quarter. Second one, otherwise zero. And as you see, uh, Excel will automatically pick zero, right? Because uh, that's the second case. Now, then here, what is our net income? Net income is then basically EBT minus taxes. Or hit enter. Still, our net income is still negative. Okay, net income is negative. So, uh, obviously, you know, this is not a very good, this, this is not a, a pretty picture. I mean, if the company has, uh, you know, a lot of companies are in, uh, that's what is meant by red. They are running in red. A lot, there are many companies that are running in red and they are on a like life support. Life support is like what? Uh, uh, infusion of uh, cash from um, uh, infusion of cash from you know some you know uh, lenders you know and then uh, but think about it a if the business has to uh, still get you no know, blood blood transfusion right that's not a viable uh, business I mean the business should be able to uh, uh, for a business to be viable, um, in the short run, this may be possible. I mean, one quarter, two quarters, yes, that's, that, that's, you know, sometimes it happens. But if you persistently uh, show negative quarterly profits, then uh, that business is, you know, uh, has a serious problem. And um, in microeconomics, there's a way to uh, find a shutdown point. I mean, uh, whether this company has to shut down or... Uh, even if it is in the short run uh, uh, incurring loss, but can they recover eventually? Uh, can they continue to uh, produce and, you know, uh, make, yes, uh, there is a way of, you know, uh, uh, finding the uh, shutdown point or, you know, whether they can, you know, continue to uh, operate or uh, and get out of it. Uh, and in microeconomics, it's not very difficult. So, uh, again, um, I used, you know, uh, deliberately, deliberately, I made, you know, uh, uh, I used, you know, um, negative profit, example of a company with negative uh, EBIT, because when it is negative, then we'll run into this issue and we can have... Uh, we can apply uh, uh, we can apply this command and understand the uh, value of that command understand the worth of the what it does and how it can make our lives easier yes um, in other words without something like this you will have to manually check everything You'll have to manually check everything and, you know, uh, manually uh, put zero there. But without manually doing anything and visually checking anything, uh, if you have a command like this built in there, it's going to automatically take care of that, right? All righty, I guess that's all the time we have today, all the time we have. So uh, I uh, tomorrow... Um, uh, we're going to be going into uh, the uh, exercise balance sheet. Uh, I hope, you know, we can uh, get it uh, like in the first hour. 
Uh, one more thing. Um, actually, I'm um, maybe you know um, tomorrow I may start a little late because I have actually a, a internet problem. My uh, router died, so I had to call a technician, uh, and the technician is coming uh, tomorrow between five and six, and then. Um, uh, you might wonder how, how am I connecting to, I'm actually using my phone as a hotspot. So I'm connecting through my phone. Uh, so if the, uh, if they, I think you will just swap the uh, router, you know, um, uh, that will be easier, uh, easiest thing. And, but if it takes long, uh, I don't think it will take long, but you know, if ever, he comes late and it takes uh, long, uh, I might start a little late, but not too late, okay? So just letting you know. All righty, so uh, that's it for today. Any questions? Any questions so far, any questions? Yeah, Professor? Yeah, yeah. I, I had a question. Um, I couldn't find, I don't remember you um, discussing the GAS acronym, the Goods Available for Sale. Um, I was wondering what video was that exactly where you discussed that? Because I don't remember hearing about it when I was watching the video. Uh, I may, I don't know, I, I may or may not, but you know, uh, all the videos here, basically, uh, some of them are, they already you know uh, grayed out. That means they are, that means, you know, they are no longer available here, but uh you know, I gave you my um, YouTube channel, yeah. right? If you go to my YouTube channel, uh, you can go over everything. So it must have been discussed in one of these videos. I don't know exactly uh, which one. Uh, not factoring, but uh, before factoring. It would be before factoring. So um, it would be um, whatever... Uh, whatever is before factoring okay so i understand it it takes a lot of time to go through all these videos but you know uh, uh, but uh it will be relatively in the uh, uh because it's income statement it will be relatively in the earlier videos right somewhere between one and six or one and uh, uh, seven intro videos right it could be okay all righty so uh um that's it for today i um hope you have a great evening everyone good night and i will see you guys tomorrow okay all right stop uh recording i'll stop recording uh